Are you or someone you know facing breast cancer? Get the answers and support you need to better understand this condition in our interview with an expert oncologist. The interview starts now. You know, I'm UK based. Um, my practice is all, you know, um, even though I'm from India, my undergraduation and postgraduation, I did continue my further postgraduation in specialty in UK, and I've been here. Uh, in the NHS for many years, and as a consultant, uh, my specialty is lung and breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Being a clinical oncologist, I give all treatments, including you know um, systemic therapy, you know chemotherapy, radiotherapy, immunotherapy, uh, targeted therapy, hormone treatment, everything. You know, being a clinical oncologist, you are all in all. You just don't stop as a radiation oncologist or medical oncologist. It's 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 one of those things in India in UK that you have. To meet the demand and capacity, <laughs> you haven't got enough to support one and the other. So we try to combine our skills, and uh, and I find that as useful for a patient journey because you don't have to see different consultants, and and have a time lag. You get everything in one one umbrella, and uh, there's a good continuity of care, good trust, and good follow up without any delays, and good care, and it, it does uh, make a difference to stay in one with one. Very so that's my intro. First question is, uh, would you mind telling us about the current state of breast cancer research and the I, I know you have explained the treatments that you're currently doing, but how is the current state of the breast cancer research in general? Well, in, in UK and across, uh, it is very active, uh, very much well ahead, thought of. Uh, all aspects, you know, early breast cancer, uh, locally advanced breast cancer, advanced breast cancer, you know, you, I put it as a different categories. And uh, breast cancer itself, you know, these are the three broad categories for breast cancer. So early breast cancer is curable, you know, and then, but still patients relapse uh, down the line. So you do need to find out the behavior, the biology and why they're relapsing, because there are lots of drivers you know gene mutations gene resistance you know even though the early breast cancer you did initial surgery and then if it is a high risk you give chemotherapy immunotherapy radiotherapy and everything and put them on depending upon the behavior of the cancer there are four behaviors if they are hormone sensitive you go for 10 years of hormone treatment or five years so in spite of that the cancer comes back so people are looking at research in finding out you know can we bring more different treatment up front, which has been working in the palliative setup. You know, there are lots of drugs like CDK4 inhibitor, which is uh, now being tested in the near adjuvant and adjuvant setup. You know, I, the, I know these are Greek and Latin, but I will yeah. explain to you, you know, when you have a localized early breast cancer and uh, the surgeons do all the information, biopsy, everything, staging, and say it is only in one place, and for example, it's estrogen driven. Uh, it's a hormone that is driven. So it is ER positive and the progesterone, another hormone driven PR positive. And the HER2, which is another protein, which can be a naughty protein. It doesn't make the cell sit in one place. It moves around. So that is a high risk. You know, if it is HER2 negative, then you do this, this, this. We do surgery and we, if, the, if it isn't moved to the lymph nodes, or if it is a grade three, it's quite, you know, we look at so many tumor factors to assess the risk, whether it is a low risk, intermediate risk, or a high risk. We also do a gene test, oncotype genetic score. You know, we send the sample, it's probably going to America and coming back, we don't have it locally, okay? So we do send, it's a personalized, you know, you do send the sample for anybody who are, you know, the age, the tumor size, and the risk. Uh, you know, see if they would benefit from chemotherapy. So we are more into personalized what is needed for that tumor behavior for that for that person. We take patient factors and tumor factors and send it up. So what I'm trying to say is there are lots of trials in the early breast cancer. So that's where, you know, prevention is better than cure. That's always, and I allowed to say that, you know, why don't you get it right first time, you know, get to know your enemy better first time and then make sure it doesn't come back again later on. So the lots of research going in the, we are quite active, I'm quite active 
uh, our our trust is quite active. There is a NCRN national research uh, you know team there. You've got commercial company based commercial trials knocking at your door, and there is a good local research uh, network. Uh, you've got LREC uh, you know local ethics committee for research. We have an RNI department in our trust. Every trust has got an RNI department. You know what what needs to be focused is uh, research is quite strong it is out there but it's the clinicians time and the engagement and involvement in it you know being a clinical in the nhs you know because i'm in the nhs i don't think research has touched the private sector here it needs a lot of setup uh, resources a dedicated a trained skilled workforce should be there so there are a lot lots to do i think we need to pump in uh, more workforce more time are dedicated allocated to research and uh, there's way more to go with the existing nhs you know you need everybody motivate to be involved so that every patient come across to every consultant should have the opportunity to talk about uh, availability and access and participation i think that's more to come but uh, uh, at least, you know, I'm able to talk this much because I am involved and I do know what's going on in different categories uh, along the breast cancer and there are, uh, and, and research is happening and you do get to know to ASCO and ESCO and San Antonio, uh, you know, all these uh, conferences where, do, where there is groundbreaking research, you know, publication, new landmark studies and abstracts, they're all coming up and we do change the practice uh, based on that, but there is a system in UK. It has to go through NICE, you know, um, National Institute of Clinical Excellence. And there's a committee platform that it all cost benefit, you know, because it's a central part. Uh, so you need to make sure that it is beneficial overall in terms of side effects and uh, benefits. Evidence-based, we do practice evidence-based even in research. We do need research to practice an evidence-based medicine and oncology, don't we? So they're all interlinked. So I'm going to give a break too, so that you can let me direct where, where you want me to answer. Thank you. Well, actually, uh, thank you so much for that explanation that actually answers at least four of my next questions. So thank you so much. And uh, I really, uh, I'm really excited to ask more and seeing how your practice is very advanced. I mean, at least from our country and uh, it's very, it's very great to know that we can have access to these informations, right? And, you know, it's it's for a greater good, like uh, what Mr. Kose wanted to achieve. Uh, this is the reason why we're trying to interview doctors or uh, special uh, doctors with specialties like you so we can have access to this information. Well, my next question is, how do you approach discussing treatment options and prognosis with breast cancer patients? I mean, um, there are two pathways, uh, diagnostic pathway and treatment pathway. Uh, for any breast cancer, we, uh, there is a system called primary healthcare GP, you know, general practitioner system in UK. So, um, and that is a two week rule for anybody who comes with symptoms, you know, uh, the lump, or a discharge, or they're worried about breast pain, you know, all the symptoms that the red flag symptoms, uh, you just go through your GP. So that system is there. There is a generic system. Everybody has to register to a general practitioner. Oh. And, uh, you know, uh, and uh, so it's all interlinked. So you're not missed in the community, in the society. Everyone has got a NHS number and a GP registration number. So you've got any problems. You just, you know, uh, go there and within two weeks, you're seen in a one-stop clinic. You know, everything is done. If you're worried, you know, the initial, what we call it as breast cancer, triple assessment, you know, you assess them straight away with mammogram, ultrasound scan and the biopsy, everything if you're worried. And then uh, the there is a target, you know, you always have a target that 32 day and 61 day target for diagnosis and treatment. So we try to get into it. So the time is, time is important, isn't it? You avoid delays and everything gets done. And because it's everyone, it's not just private, it's a national. So, um, you know, everybody gets a fair chance. In a private, maybe you should sh you can shorten. In every time you get everything, but not everybody can afford to pay. So we do have a fair system in terms of, uh, um, you know, two-week rule and they come in, they get diagnosed. And uh, we all discuss in the multidisciplinary team meeting, you know, we all a team, you know, breast specialist team where you get the radiologist, the pathologist, the oncologist, the surgeons, 
and the nurse specialist, we do have a breast cancer nurse specialist who forms a link between the surgeons and the oncologist and provides support and psychological support or any support, they are a link to the patient. So the patient have the direct contact for the breast cancer nurse. So anything needs to gear up and speedy up and put it into links and place, they help. And they also help how to cope up with the diagnosis in the community. You know, do you have a counseling center or do you need to get the physical appliances set it up, you know, um, uh, to, to, to support the image, you know, the hair and other things, you know, to support the, uh, the organs, you know, that. Um, so there is a link uh, and then they come to the oncologist. They're all discussed. Make sure. Yeah. Yes. The histology is right. We see each other. There is a peer review, so it's not one person's decision. Lots of eyes and ears comes in to make sure that's the right decision. We cross check, cross cover. We give all the opinions. It's not just me. There are four oncologists or five oncologists like me. So even one does mistake or one misses, the other one picks up. So it is like a holistic approach. And then you get oh. the diagnosis right. You've seen the mammogram, everybody challenges, you, you need to question, you know, are you right? Are you saying right? I'm not saying this. Can you explain? You know, things like that. You do it behind, even before seeing the patient. And when you see the patient, they come to us, one of us in the clinic. And then, uh, you know, when a patient comes to me, I, I explain everything. And then we keep a follow-up. There's a follow-up system. Does that explain your question? Yeah, I mean, very much so. Thank you so much, Dr. Aparna. Well, uh, my next